Henry, the question of free will is something that everyone can identify with, and it's something that we all think we have, yet philosophers and now neuroscientists are engaged in very heated debate because if you assume that there is a mechanistic, materialistic view of the world, it's actually really hard for philosophers and neuroscientists, when they think about it, to come up with a mechanism for free will. I mean, they, they, they come up with some, but they're somewhat tortured. So how do you look at free will, particularly injecting quantum mechanics into it? Is this a kind of a, a shortcut to really have free will? Well, I think it's, it's, the, it's the key question, and, uh, <clears throat> or at least a very key question. And uh, my view on the matter starts with the idea that, <clears throat> or with the claim that the idea of free will makes no sense at all in a deterministic universe. So if the universe really were classical, uh, the idea of a free will makes no sense. If you have a world where you have two processes, one process is psychological and one process is physical, as, 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 as seems to be the case in quantum mechanics, um, then, you, then my idea of free will is that the, the choice is made in the psychological realm. To me, it makes no sense to say that a choice comes out of nothing at all, just out of the blue. That there has to be, I believe, some reason for a choice to be what it is. Let's this is the law of insufficient reason, that there shouldn't be anything that just has no foundation or... or I, I want to start here and, and dig into this, because you said very uh, dogmatically that if the world is materialistic, mm -hmm. that there is no chance for free will. Now that, uh, uh, granted philosophers and, and neuroscientists argue over this, but rarely do they come to that strong a conclusion. Well, Why do you say that? Well, I believe that um, philosophers were faced with this problem. I and mean, once, particularly, Newton came along and said that this world was mechanical. Um, philosophers were faced with this problem of free will. I mean, particularly if they had any religious... Uh, and um, the, um, I think they have struggled unsuccessfully. To, to try to reconcile the, the, the fact, I mean, the, the assumption of classical mechanism with the idea of free will. I think that it basically is incompatible, and I agree that philosophers faced with this have, have created fantastic philosophical positions and arguments back and forth to try to justify it, but I think the reason they failed is that it's not possible. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a tremendous, as you know, literature of philosophers that are, but other philosophers always pick holes in any philosopher's argument, and uh, I think rightly so, because they're 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 up against an insoluble problem, and uh, the solution to the problem is that classical mechanics is not correct. But 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 why is it insoluble? Because classical mechanics and, and materialism is a closed system that... that, that yeah, the, according to quantum mechanics, according to classical mechanics, the physical world is causally complete. Namely, the physical past completely determines the physical future, and therefore you uh, have a complete determinism. And anything that happens, um, at least insofar as it affects the physical world, is completely determined by something that happened before. So it's not free in the, in the, in the sense that you think it's... And if our brains are just totally part of a classical materialistic system, it's locked into that same system, That's right, right. and therefore there's no free will. That's right. So I think that once you start with the premise that classical mechanics is right, that you're forced to the conclusion there is no free will, and people who say it's an illusion would be correct. And there are books. The, the, the illusion of conscious will. And, uh, and, and, and at least those positions, philosophers would say that free will is an illusion, you would say at least are, 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 are coherent. Yes. And it's internally consistent yes, with a materialistic say. position. Yes, yes, absolutely. So materialism and no free will is internally consistent. You believe it's wrong, but it's at least internally consistent. Right. right okay, right. Now, let's, now let's see how quantum mechanics 
injects real free will into the equation? Okay, well, the main point is that the quantum mechanical equations dealing with the physical world only partly, they do not determine what's actually going to happen. They determine possibilities for what might happen. Something else is needed. A question needs to be posed. And the posing of this question, if you just look at the quantum mechanical equations, does not pose the question. It only uh, describes the potentialities. So you need something else. And uh, um, the, in the way it works in, in actual practice in quantum mechanics is that this something else is what we describe as our conscious processing, reasons and values and things like this. So if we have two processes, then I can say what I mean by free choice. What I mean by free two choice... Two processes being one the psychological and one the physical. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Got two the psychological and the physical. Mm -hmm. Then I can make sense of free will not by saying it's free, it's not determined by anything at all, which I think is somehow nonsensical. It's got to be determined by something. But it's determined by reason and values and, uh, and psychological processing determines it. So for free will, in, in your uh, view, to be real and to, to, to exist, mm -hmm. to have free will, mm -hmm. you absolutely need psychological processes that have causal impact right. on the physical world. Yes. Mm -hmm. And without that, you've got no free will. That's right. And so uh, the burden on those people who believe only in materialism, only in the classical uh, 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 mechanics of materialism, they have the burden of saying, how can they have free will in a closed system? You have the burden, if I might, of saying, okay, I am now positing a separate process, psychological process, which I need here. And so that gives me the free will, but you have the burden of telling me what that psychological process is uh, to give me confidence that it's something real. Um, well, the first, <clears throat> um, the person who believes in classical determinism I think has the burden of justifying a belief in classical determinism when if you look at the brain, the brain does not seem to conform. If you, if you say that quantum mechanics is really what's happening, you, so the, the, the premise is, is wrong to begin with. So to me, that just throws out that whole possibility. It doesn't fit the facts. It doesn't fit what we know about the physical world. And uh, now, uh, the question is, in how much detail do you want this description of psychological process? We have a certain idea. I, have, I'm, I make some evaluations, and uh, I decide that it's better to send my son to Stanford than to Harvard, you know, for, for some reasons that I have. And, uh, well, you know, it, um, Whitehead, for example, was faced with this question, and he has three books kind of describing all these intricacies of psychological process. And uh, so, yeah, there's a big problem of describing how psychological processes really work. But all I'm saying is, I'm assuming, on the basis of the way quantum mechanics works, that there is such a process and that it has this effect that quantum theory says it has. And it's critical for there to exist free will. You, I didn't say it's critical for there to exist free will. I say that once you, once you accept quantum mechanics, there is room for free will, and um, there is a need for some choices to be made which are not made by the physical process. And, and if it's not made by the physical process, I'm defining free will to be choices that are made by the psychological process. I don't think free will makes any sense in a world that's completely determined by physical processing. But it makes perfectly good sense if you say there's another process which is psychological, and free will means that it's determined by the psychological.